Hello, this is Holly Sanders, and thank you for joining me for this presentation on terminology. This is the second PowerPoint in our Introduction to the Human Body or Orientation to the hum Human Body lesson. This still correlates with Merib's Essentials of Anatomy and Physiology, Chapter 1. I know many of you may have already taken medical terminology or in that course right now, and the good news is that you will be able to use the skills of breaking down words uh, to help you understand the words that you're going to learn in this course. And for those of you that have not taken medical terminology, basically it's special terminology used to prevent misunderstanding when it comes to patient care. These words come from Greek and Latin roots, so many of them will be unfamiliar at first, but the more you work with them, the more comfortable you will become with them, and you'll be using these words and these terms throughout this course and throughout your programs and future careers. So it's really important that you take the time necessary to get these terms down during this portion. Now these terms will help us identify exact positions, directions, regions, and even structures of our patients. One of the things I wanted to start with was to remind some of you or introduce to others how to break words down into their main parts to gain understanding. As you can see on the screen, we're using the example word of a domino pelvic, which can look like a large word, but if you use the skills that you will gain in medical terminology, then you can break this down into two words. So the first thing you'll want to look for is the combining vowel, which is normally an O, and in this case it is an O, my cursor is on it. And if you do what I call a slash, meaning slash right through the combining vowel, then it will break the word into two parts. And then you see a domino, and then on the other side of the O, pelvic. Now some of you that have already taken medical terminology may recall that abdomino means abdomen, and pelvic means pelvis, and actually, the suffix of IC simply means pertaining to. So if you're able to break this word down and look at it, you would see that abdominopelvic actually means pertaining to the abdomen and pelvis. Now this is a skill that I want you to work on through this course because it's a real advantage to be able to break words down to make them into smaller words for uh, memory processes as well as retention. So throughout this terminology lesson, we're going to be looking at uh, different terms, again, that we're going to use the entire semester. So it is your challenge to make sure you're comfortable working with these terms before moving into the next unit. The first term we're going to look at is called anatomical position, and this is a general health care term that we use to assume the position that every patient is in. Basically, anatomical position would be head forward in a standing position with palms up. Now, if you put your hand on your forearm, and rotate your palm from up to down, you can actually feel that the bone in your forearm on the side of your thumb is rotating. So in an anatomical position, both bones of the forearm are straight. Another thing I want to point out as you get started in this course is when we are looking at a patient or we are looking at a diagram, that it is going to be mirrored image. So the right side is on your left and the left side is on your right. It's very important that you get comfortable with this mirror image, not for your, only for your future patients, but for when you're doing things like answering diagram questions and looking at diagrams so you don't get disoriented. So make sure you start practicing this immediately. And if you look at the model here, you'll see that there's several terms associated uh, around medial, lateral, proximal, distal. These are terms that you absolutely have to get down. So let's take a closer look at each one of them. So here is a definition and examples of these terms, and something for you to consider is that they each have opposites. For instance, if you look at the first term, which is superior, which can also be seen as cranial or cephalad, what it means is toward the head, end, or upper part of the structure or the body. So here in this example, the arrow is pointing up, and the forehead is superior to the nose. But if they're superior, then there must be an opposite term, which would be inferior, which means away from the head or toward the lower part of the structure or the body. Another term for this, medical term for this, is caudal, which actually means tail, um, so toward the tail. As an example, the navel is inferior to the breastbone. The next set of terms have to do with the front and back of the body. 
Now that you are in healthcare, you're no longer going to say front. You would use the word ventral or anterior. And honestly, I use the word anterior, even though the book puts it in parentheses. That's, that's the term I'm most familiar with. But they do both mean toward the front of the body. The breastbone is anterior to the spine. As you see, the arrow is going this way. The opposite of anterior is posterior or dorsal. Dorsal like a dorsal fin on a dolphin. And again, posterior is toward or at the back side of the body. The example would be the heart is posterior to the breastbone. So if you think of where your breastbone is, it is anterior or toward the front of the heart, which is posterior. The next two opposite terms are medial and lateral. And medial sounds just like middle, and that's what it means. If something is medial, it is toward or at the midline of the body. So in this example, if you look at the arrows, it's going toward the middle, and the heart is medial to the arm. And on the opposite side, lateral means away from the midline of the body. So the arms are lateral to the chest. As you see, they're further outside or away from the middle. The next two opposite terms are proximal and distal. Proximal means close to the origin of the body part or the point of attachment of a limb or the body trunk. Now a lot of people struggle with this definition, so let me see if I can break it down into a little simpler terms for you. You've probably heard of the term proximity or close proximity. This is where uh, proximal comes into our everyday language. So if something is proximal, it basically means it's closer to the heart. You keep things that you care about in close proximity. Things that you care about are close to your heart. It's my, it's my easiest way to remember this. So if something, again, is proximal, it is closer to the trunk or the heart. For example, the elbow is proximal to the wrist. So if you put your hand on your elbow and then you put your hand on your wrist, you can see right along with me that the elbow is closer to the heart than the wrist. On the opposite side, distal means further from the origin of a body part or point of attachment meaning it's further away from the heart or further away from the trunk. So distal sounds like distance, so it's the further distance. Proximal is close proximity, distal is distance or away. So an example would be the knee is distal to the thigh. So if you put your hand on your knee and you put your hand, other hand on your thigh, you would agree with me that the hand on the knee is more distant or distal from the heart. The last two are superficial and deep. And superficial, just like you would use in middle school, saying she is so superficial, means that it's toward the body surface um, or shallow. So superficial would be toward the, ex the external surface of the body, and deep would be toward the internal surface of the body. So as an example, skin is superficial to the skeleton because, as we know, the skeleton is deeper than the skin. You need to take the time to become very familiar with these words. There's only 12 of them. Superior, toward the head. Inferior, away from the head. Anterior or ventral, toward the front of the body. Dorsal or posterior, toward the back of the body. Medial, toward the midline. Lateral, away from the midline. Proximal, close to the heart. Distal, further away from another body part from the trunk or the heart, superficial toward the external surface, and deep toward the internal surface. Those of you that have not taken medical terminology and are new to healthcare terms or healthcare course are going to have to work harder to get comfortable with these words, but the time you put in is well worth it. We're going to be moving into different units where you're going to hear things like, uh, what is the distal lateral bone of the leg? And that's going to ask you to recall this terminology as well as understand the skeletal structure and for those of you who are curious the distal lateral bone of the leg would be the fibula. Next we're going to move into regional terms. Now welcome to your first diagram of the course and you're going to be able to locate this diagram on Angel as well as a posting I put on Edmodo and you're going to need to learn all of these terms. These are regional terms so if you're speaking to another healthcare professional and they're talking about, a pa a, let's say, a patient's sternal area, that both of you know that you're talking about the breastbone. 
That goes for every single one of these. So take the time to get these down. And the good news about this is these will come up the rest of the semester. So the work you put in now will continue to pay off. So there is a ventral or anterior diagram and a posterior diagram. Now this is your first challenge to put your memory techniques at work. Here is the picture of what you can print off from Angel or Edmodo. And you will see that you have the body region terms on one side and then blank bodies for you to fill in the lines and write the words. I did this on purpose because it is a great learning technique for you to write. So don't get tempted to just draw lines from say frontal to the frontal region. Draw a line from the frontal region to the side and actually write frontal in every single one of these terms. And there's no reason for you to do this only once. You can print off as many of these pages as you like and continue to write these words and fill them in and quiz yourself until you're certain you have them down. Now again, some of you will have to work long and hard on this because these are new words and some of you already have experience. But to be successful in this class, you're going to have to put in the time on this diagram as well as future diagrams to learn and master the anatomical structures. The next set of terminology has to do with body planes and sections. There are four or five main sections that we'll look at and first and foremost these sections will come up in the book as different diagrams and different ways you'll look at things but also it's a way that we look at patients. So let's look at the one to the left first. This is a medial section. As you can see it separates the body into right and left halves and if it's directly in the middle then we'll call it mid-sagittal. And as you see this picture of the abdomen, this is a mid-sagittal section or a side section so you can see the organs and the contents of the abdomen. The next one is a frontal section. That's when you separate the body into anterior and posterior parts. And here's a thoracic view of a frontal section. And then we go to a transverse plane or section, which is where it goes across and divides the body into superior and inferior parts. And so if you look at this, we're looking down onto the, the liver, which is over here. And here's the spleen and stomach. So we're looking at the organs of the abdominal cavity in a transverse view. The next terms describe body cavities. Basically, a cavity is a hole that something sits in. So we have two main cavities, and I'm going to show it to you on a diagram. We have the posterior or dorsal body cavities, and then the ventral or anterior body cavities. In the posterior body cavities, we have the cranial cavity, which, of course, the brain sits in, and the spinal cavity, which holds the spinal cord. On the ventral side, we have the thoracic cavity, which holds the lungs and the heart, the abdominal cavity, which holds all of the abdominal organs, and the pelvic cavity, which holds the pelvic organs. Now, there is a huge muscle that separates the thoracic and the abdominal cavity, and that's called the diaphragm. But down below, inferiorly, between the abdominal and the pelvic cavity, there is not a structure. This is just a line to show where the general division between these two cavities are, but there is no structure here. The only thing that makes this different is what organs are kept within each. And then if you remember that very first word that we talked about breaking down midterm, here it is, abdominopelvic cavity. And just to remind you, that means pertaining to the abdomen and the pelvis. So make sure you become comfortable with these terms and these different cavities. Medically, and this is quite common out in the field and in your professions, we divide the abdomen into four quadrants. Now I want to take time to note to you that this is not the stomach. The stomach is actually this organ that my cursor is touching right here. And the stomach is usually said for the abdominal area, but now that we are all in healthcare and using proper terminology, you're definitely going to want to use the term abdomen when we're referring to this area. It's divided into the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, and left lower quadrant. And here's the abbreviations, R-U-Q, L-U-Q, L-L-Q, R-L-Q. Take the time to become familiar with this because in your professions, people will talk about the R-U-Q, and you'll actually get to the point where you'll understand that they're talking about the area of the abdomen that contains the liver, transverse colon, which is here transverse colon, liver, gallbladder, and if you were to talk about the RLQ, you'd be talking about 
the sigmoid colon, ascending colon, sum of the small intestine, and the appendix down here. We're not at the point where I expect you to know what organs are in which quadrant, but start familiarizing yourself with all four quadrants. And by the end of this course, you will know all the organs and where they're housed. The next set of terms has to do with regions of the abdomen. Quadrants is what we just went through. Quad means four. So there are four quadrants, whereas there are nine regions. And just take the time to learn this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we'll start with the middle region, which if you look at these white terms, they're moved up just a little bit from this picture from the book. So we'll start with the upper right area. Now remember, I'm looking at this in mirrored image, so this patient's right area is opposite. It's on my left. The right hypochondriac region is the area of this region here. Hypo means beneath. Chondro means cartilage, and I, IAC means pertaining to. So it's pertaining to under the cartilage of the ribs. So it's basic med term that's describing this area. To your right of that would be the epigastric region. If you break this word down, epi means above, gastro means stomach. IC is pertaining to above the stomach. So as you can see, it describes this region of the abdomen. And then on the left-hand side, you have the left hypochondriac region again. So now we'll move down, or inferiorly, to the next three. This area is often referred to as the flank or lumbar region. So you have your right lumbar region, right here at the navel, the umbilical region. And then on the left side, you have the left lumbar or flank region. And then moving down inferiorly again, you have the right iliac or inguinal region here where my cursor is touching. Iliac comes from the bone of the hip that you can actually grab. It's the, the lateral bone of the hip. That's where that term comes from. And inguinal actually means groin, which I'm sure you're reviewing with your body regions. In the middle, you have hypogastric region. Hypo means below. Gastro means stomach. And I see it's pertaining to. So it's pertaining to the region below the stomach, and then on the left side you also have the left iliac or inguinal region. On the diagram here to your right, it just shows the different organs that are within the abdominal cavity as it breaks down into your nine regions. So go ahead and look that over and start familiarizing yourself with these. The last thing you want to do is divide now all the things that you've learned. So give you one, one moment to back up. Okay, in review, when you look at these terms that you're going to work on, they are regional terms. These are regions of the body. So if I were to speak about someone's deltoid region, I'd be speaking about their shoulder. Or let's say their axillary region, that would be their armpit. So these are regional terms to become familiar with. Also work on your directional terms. So when we talk about a direction on the patient's body, you will be able to follow along. So an example of this would be the deltoid region is lateral to the axillary region. So use the terms uh, as you practice learning both the regional terms and their directional terms. Next we covered body planes and sections and these are just how you divide the body to get an angle such as in, for an image or even how you're going to look at diagrams throughout the course. Then we looked at body cavities and remember a cavity is a hole that something sits within. For instance, the cranial cavity holds the brain. Regions are areas of the body or on the body. Cavities are holes that things sit within. And then finally we just looked at abdominal quadrants. And yes, these could be considered regions of the abdomen but it's of only the abdomen, not the whole body. So you have your quadrants, which are the four, uh, right, upper, lower, left, those type, versus the regions, which are when you divide the abdomen into nine areas. So make sure you take as much time as necessary to become comfortable with all of these terms, and I'll see you next with the chemistry unit. Have a great day.